Okay, let's do the images exercise one or images one. Now the instructions for this look really long, but what it really comes down to is it's a pretty simple exercise. We're just sizing an image, two images, and we're making two different sizes of each one. So in the end, you'll be saving out four images. It's really just a matter of putting the right numbers in the right places and knowing is it a horizontal or a vertical. But what, one thing that makes these instructions really long is that I don't know whether you have Photoshop or not. If you have Photoshop or access to Photoshop, like you're on campus or you have your own copy of Photoshop, then great. Uh, please, you're going to use the, the, the first part of the instructions. They apply directly. And although different versions of Photoshop may be a little different, it should work out pretty well. And even if you don't have Photoshop, I encourage you to look through to, to watch my video as I go through those instructions and take a look at the, the, those instructions in a handout, which I have up here, because then I'm going to move on to Pixlr. I'm going to probably spend a little less time with that because you would have had the first instructions already. It's a similar um, sort of structured uh, free online photo editor. So if you don't have Photoshop, you can use Pixlr instead. So the first part of the instructions won't directly apply to you. The second part will, but please stick with it anyway. All right, either way, you make a project folder called Images 1. By the way, this will be our first exercise, I think, where there is no HTML document, but I still want you to use folders. Within the project folder, make a, a resource or originals folder, and it's in that originals folder that you will download the two images supplied in the, in the, on Moodle in the resource area. And they're going to be called Jim. It's a gymnastics photo. And B-ball, it is a baseball photo. Okay. Then with, you're going to make a project. Uh, within the project folder, you're going to make a root folder. And I suggest you call it images one and your name. Right? Good. Within the root folder, you have two subfolders, thumbs and full. These words are traditional. Thumb as in thumbnail, as in a small, very small photo. And full as in the full size photo. Um, you, we could have just said big and small or something like that. It would be the same idea. Actually, it would have been small and big, thumb and full. Um, so we're going to make little, uh, make, uh, take this a really, truly enormous photo, which would be way too big to use in the web, which is the originals. We're not going to disturb the originals. So copy over them. In fact, this is, the, this is a very traditional idea. You take your originals, you keep them safe in a folder outside of the root folder, and you save into the root folder the ones that you're going to use. All right. In fact, the idea of making multiple sizes of the same image and then maybe deciding later exactly which one you want um, is traditional. And sometimes we name them name them with their width. So we might say uh, the the gymnastics photo. We might name it Jim 500, Jim 400, Jim 300 for 500 pixels wide, 400 pixels wide, 300 pixels wide. It's usually the width we're most concerned about, and we we sometimes let the height set itself, or sometimes we'll do a crop. And we'll see those differences in this exercise. Okay, so that's that general idea. Um, and again, it's a Photoshop or Pixlr situation, but stick with this anyway, even if you're going to use Pixlr later. So you're going to go to Moodle and download those photos, as I said, into the originals or resource area, not into your root folder, B-Ball and Jim. Open up Photoshop. I'm going to start with the gymnastics photo. You could open both photos if you want first, or, not, or just one, it doesn't matter. But before we begin, in either case, also I want you to take a note here. Note here the idea that we have to pay attention to whether this is a vertical or horizontal. And this will be the case in our exercise next week, too, is there's a difference, vertical or horizontal. Let's look at the images. I'll show you what I mean. I have here, my, I'm in my root folder. I have an originals folder, and I have my root, sorry, I'm in my project folder. I have an originals folder, and I have a root folder here. In my originals, I have our two photos. Obviously, one is a horizontal and one is a vertical. So, of course, when we set widths, they switch, right? So, although the, the horizontal photo will be 500 pixels wide and 375 high for the full size, the vertical will be 375 wide and 500 high, right, deep. So, width and depth switch from vertical to horizontal. That's pretty traditional, too. Uh, so pay attention to that, and these numbers you'll have to you'll have to come back to them again and again. The same numbers: 575 and 175. Okay, but they switch depending if it's a vertical or horizontal. You can read this stuff. We're going to use a save for web method 
for this in, in Photoshop, which is a little different than you. If some of you may have more Photoshop, a lot of Photoshop experience, perhaps more than me. I am no expert in Photoshop. But the Save for Web is something you may not have used a lot. It's a, it's, it's a really good feature of Photoshop. It's been around for a while. It really makes the file very small. Um, it takes away a lot of the file size and makes it really fast file, very good for web. We have to remember that's File, Export, Save for Web. Okay, and you can follow along in the instructions as I'm going to kind of just do it here now. Um, and there are some screenshots there. So I'm going to go take my, first we're going to start with the gymnastics. I'm going to open up the gymnastics photo. Please ignore the fact that there's already some crop going on here because it's just what had been done last on this computer. Um, so the idea of the first photo, the gymnastics photo, is we don't want to, we've decided that we don't want to crop this. We want to keep the full photo, but we want to set the width. Good. Okay, here we go then. Um, we're going to go File, Export, Save for Web. Before we did this, if there was other toning or sharpening or anything else you wanted to do, you would do that first. That's not what this class is about. We're just making web photos for web. Save for web. It says save for web legacy. Um, ignore the fact that this thing is all, you can barely see in there. If that bothered you, you could zoom out more or something. It doesn't really, what you see here is not important, in other words. I don't know how this is going to be set for you. It might be set at who knows what. But you want to go to JPEG High for the preset. Okay? And that should give you these defaults, JPEG, JPEG high. These you can just ignore, they're all fine. You're really gonna focus down here on the image size. We are sizing the image and at the same time, it's removing other colors and things from the image that aren't necessary for the web. So remember what I said? We're gonna make the full, the larger of the two, is still far smaller than, than, than the original. So this is a vertical, so it's 375 wide, right? And that you'll see sets, because these are locked, which is, which is good. That sets the height automatically as at 545. And you might say, well, that's not 500. No, it's not. But we said we didn't want to crop the photo. Those are the proportions of the photo. So we leave it there. This will take it down to a, only 11% of the original. Yet still, this is a 375 pixel wide, like about a quarter to a third of a, of a web page wide photo. So that's the huge difference in size that's happening here. I'm going to click on Save. And it's going to then bring me to a regular save screen. I'm going to call this Jim Full. Um, the names may be slightly different in your exercise, but you can call it Jim Full. And I'm going to put it in my full folder. Jim Full into the full. And I'll click on save and so on. It'll bring me back to my original. And now I've got to do that again. I'm going to do the same thing, save for web, except this time I'm going to use it. I'm going to make it really small, make it thumbnail. And I'm not going to do that for you. You can do it, but the numbers are going to be um, the numbers are going to be 75 wide and 100. It won't, you won't set the depth. It'll be a little more than 100, or it'll be, it'll be it'll set its own. It'll be in the 100 range. So you can use 75 pixels wide for that, and then you'll put that one there also. Okay, good. So let's skip that. Let's continue along then. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this photo up, and um, we'll do the next one. I'll, you still need need to do a second one there. Save changes. No, I'm not gonna save changes. We don't want to disturb the uh, the original photo. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna do the baseball one. Now the thing about the baseball one is, for one reason or another, I've decided that I do want it to be exactly 500 by 375. Okay, good. So that's going to mean I have to crop the photo slightly to, to make it those proportions because these proportions are a little different. <clears throat> so we're going to have to do a crop. So we'll click on the cropping tool. Um, and because I did this before, as I was practicing, my numbers are here already. And it already says width and height. But this is what you want to choose. Width and height, width, x, height, x, resolution. Width by height by resolution. And when you start typing numbers in here, it may very well say inches. You don't want inches. There is a huge difference between inches and pixels. If you put inches or allow it to automatically put inches in here for 500 and 375, it will be truly enormous and it will kill your Photoshop and your computer. It won't be able to handle it. It'll be just too big. You want pixels, which are much smaller than inches. And for your resolution, you want 72 pixels per inch. 72 pixels per inch. Um, the rest of this should be fine. 
So I'm going to go ahead and um, I, that it has created a crop here as a result, right? Now I have to decide, is that really where I want my crop or do I want to change it? Do I want to make it different or something? Um, I'm going to move it a little bit maybe. Maybe I'll move it this way a little bit, move it more of the photo that way or move it for this way. So you can change it around as you wish. Maybe you just want to get in on these guys over here or something. Yeah, do what you want. Okay, as long as you hit the, have those proportions. When you're done, you just double click on it and the crop is accepted. It makes it look much smaller, but it is much smaller. I'm gonna use control plus to make it bigger so I can see it bigger. You may say, well, it's getting fuzzy. Well, it's not meant to be displayed this big. It's being displayed on a web page, not in Photoshop. So that's the difference. Then I do file. Again, I'm gonna do um, export, save for web. And again, now I don't have to change those numbers. I'm just gonna say save. I'm going to save this as a b-ball b -ball full. Okay, and I'm going to save it. And then, now I've already done the crop, the next thing I can do is I can just do the file save for web. All right? I can do file, uh, export, save for web. And this time I could just do, I'll do this one, why not? I'm just going to do this 100. It'll automatically make 75. I'll say save. This one is going to be called bball um, thumb. And I'm going to put this in the thumb folder. I didn't do the other thumb, but no big deal. You can do it yourself. Um, in case you want to know, how small, how have these photos changed very much? Yes, they have. Let's look at view details. The original photos, let's go take a look. The original photos are uh 1672 1.6 megs and 2.2 megs okay good but the ones we just finished the full ones are only 67k tiny and we only did one of the thumbs but look at it, it's 6k they've gone they've gone tiny 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 all right um so what you would do is when you finish those you get those those four photos made you would zip up that folder and submit it on moodle but let's say you don't have photoshop let's try out pixlr some instructions about Pixlr, about how, oops, I actually have Pixlr open with an image right now. I'm sorry, I forgot I was already practicing with it. Uh, let's close that up. Pixlr, you want the Pixlr E and follow the instructions about signing up. Yours won't have any history on it when you open it up. It looks just like this. It's the more advanced of, the, of their Pixlr photo editors. Okay. Um, so you will sign up for a free account and you'll end up here. So it looks something like this and you say open image. And then you go and get the, um, let's start with the gymnastics one again, okay? And it'll ask you this, this pre-resize. And I would just take the default, which is full HD. Essentially, it's saying, that's an awful big image. I'm going to have trouble with that image. Yes, you have to suffer through these ads. You can close them up if you want, though. Okay, here we go. Same idea, we don't want to crop this, so we're just going to do a size. Guess what? That's just image, image size. There is no save for web option here, which means the files we make from this will be maybe slightly bigger, but it'll be, won't really matter. Again, what was the width? Do you remember? For the full size one, it was 375. And with the height, we will leave it what it's set because it's constraining proportions already. And we just apply, and that's it. We're going to do file, save. And this, this is where we can change the name to Jim Full, right? Good. JPEG is fine. High is fine. The numbers are already set. We click on, we don't click on save. It's a download button. The thing is, this automatically sticks it in the download folder. If you're using Chrome, it will show it for you down here. It's actually, I've done this a couple of times, so you see it's putting number two on there now. It also describes, hey, you could have made it save someplace in particular, but that's a pain. You really, it's kind of a pain anyway. That's, that's the only real problem with this program is that right now you have to go find that, which will be in your download folder or wherever your default place for downloads is. You have to go find it. You have to go copy it. If you if it renamed it and you want the renamed one, well, you have to change that name too. But copy it, go put it in the full folder, and then continue along. Okay? And I'm going to close that. Um, and how would you continue along? Next, of course, I would do the image size, but I would do it at 75 wide. And I can't, control plus still works to make it bigger too if you want. So I'm not going to do the second one. I'll let you do that. Um, but don't forget to go get the photo afterwards and put it in the folder. And in the right folder. And you can change the name there if you need to.
Okay, I'm going to go file close and we'll bring up the baseball one. Open image, baseball open, and apply, and stupid ads. Ah, okay, they went away. Good. Okay, so baseball is a little different. It's going to be a two step process, though, again, it's going to be first crop, then image size. The cropping tool is right here. I think you should click on size for the crop and put your cropping numbers over here, not over there. This cropping um, stuff up here, the way this is presented, is a little bit odd to me. Um, but this works like this. It's kind of like we're going to do the numbers twice, though. There's probably a little better way. Maybe you can figure it out yourself. But I'm going to just do it like this. Width is 500, right? And the height is 375, which gives us this same kind of boxy area. Stupid ad. Um, I could change this how I wanted to. I can move this around here. When I get it done the way I want to, I stop. And I'm just going to trim his head a little bit. Something like that. And I can't double click, though. Double click is going to screw things up. I click on Apply. That was the crop. And then I would do the image, image size. All I have to do here is change the numbers again for some reason, but the 375 is automatic and I click apply and then it does the size and then I do file, save, and I do the change the name for the full, do the download, go find it, move it, and then do the baseball the next size, which is the smaller size. And then again, I've got my folders full of photos and I zip the root folder. So there's a run through of two different programs you could use to do this exercise.